We got this little scamp. He's definitely a little guy. Oh, he's got that pin right in the corner of his jaw. Oh, well. Wow. Oh, my God, that. Oh, 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 that boofed my hand. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Fuck. Big dog. He's pretty big, eh? As many as possible. I took like fucking four. <laughs> Hey guys, Josh here from Bris Vegas Fishing with your dosage of fishing goodness. I don't know how to introduce you to it guys, but we're on the edge of storm season. We're gonna be looking at targeting threadfin salmon and barramundi in drains like what we have over here behind me. And we're gonna be using the weather in our favor, working out how it all comes together, how it presents itself. So sit back, it's gonna be quite a uh, in-depth video, I hope. I've got a lot of information to try and offload on you guys and share as such. So let's get into it. Let's have a look at what exactly Josh is talking about. All right, so let's talk storms. Let's talk weather patterns. Let's talk how it all influences what we're doing. And I'm gonna try and break it down into layman's terms. All right, so we're gonna talk about high pressure systems, low pressure systems, and another thing that falls into place, which is called troughs or trough lines. Now, a trough line is a defined area of low pressure. Now, these can occur within both a high pressure system and a low pressure system. They're defined on a synoptic chart as a dotted line, which you can probably see as I'm speaking. Now, uh, what does this do and how does it affect uh, us for storm season? So, during storm season, you get a few different factors. Normally a lot of low pressure systems, but you still get high pressure systems. Now, All right, a quick expansion on trough. Now, a trough is created from the elongation or stretching of the isobars. Now, your isobars are your rings that surround your high pressure system and they define the differences in pressure. Now, when they stretch or elongate, that is what creates the trough line or that is what is known as a trough line. Hopefully that helps you guys understand a little bit better what trough lines are. I didn't actually have that in the video, so let's quickly jump back to it. Now, as we come into summer, we get higher temperatures, which in turn creates a little bit more moisture or what we know as humidity in the air. Now, as that trough comes through an area, it pulls the moisture in from surrounding areas and creates upwellings, which creates storms, uh, uncertainty and instability in the pressure but your barometric pressure then becomes a bit more unstable which yes and no can affect fish feeding and uh, how hungry they are but what we're looking at is the fact that it creates a storm now storm is going to create a little bit of runoff which is what we're looking at so we've got our runoff <laughs> which comes down your systems, creeks, uh, creeks, drains, all that sort of stuff. Now, when I say drains, I don't necessarily mean stormwater drains. I mean more so like naturally occurring drains, creeks, and feeders that come into your main systems. <sighs> so how does that affect us? Well, we've had a very dry winter. A lot of the bait, fish life, prawns, crustaceans, all that have moved right up these small drains, feeder creeks, getting as far up the system as they can and getting away from the predatory fish. So that leaves a lot of the main channel and a lot of the main river rather barren as far as food sources go. So what does that mean for us as anglers? Well, it means we don't have to use our fancy technology. We don't have to think too hard or go looking for fish. We can basically go off the fact that Instinctually, these creatures are creatures of habit, the same as any other fish. Barramundi are, by nature, ambush predators. Threadfin salmon are opportunistic. They also forage. However, they will still fall back to a uh, ambush position, the same as what a barramundi will do. So we're basically targeting points where, like this, on a run out tide, 
the water will flush out after a rain, after a bit of rain. Okay. So what time of day do we want? Well, we want something in the evening because, as you know, the storms build normally in the eight, late afternoons and early evenings. The humidity gets to 100 percent. Storm comes through, the rainfall comes down the system, it flushes the bait. But if we've got a rising tide, that bait isn't necessarily going to be pushed out to the maximum effect. So say you have a high tide in the evening, you would then follow your next low tide because you're still going to have a little bit of runoff, be you're still going to have a little bit of runoff coming down that system on that low. That's the time you want to target. Even better if you can get that tide timing of a night time. These fish are going to be a lot more ferocious and less timid because they've got the cover of night, they have that ambush factor. So we want a low tide in the evening or in the early hours of the morning following a storm. Yeah, that's what we want. So how do you get all of this together? How do you find all this information? I use three different websites. I use the Oz Forecast website for rain and how the storms are coming through. I use the BOM website, the Bureau of Meteorology website, to uh, two different tabs as well. One is a forecast of what the synoptic charts are doing in days coming, and another one is a live synoptic chart. Well, when I say live, it's normally updated once every six hours. Uh, but basically, I'm just looking at these two different, um, or three different tabs, if you will, to be able to work out when and where I should be focusing my efforts. And then fourth, or secondly, we want the app, Willy Weather, and that's basically just so we can tell tide times, and basically we wanna be able to match our tide time up to after there's been a storm. So the bigger the low, the more runoff there's gonna be because there's less water, and the further it's gonna fall, pumps the drains a little bit harder to start with, and then the increased rainfall uh, that's fluctuated the system is gonna help push out that bait accordingly. If you've got this far, you've obviously found this information helpful, so definitely drop a like. Let's go a little bit further, and let's talk gear. All right, so. What gear am I going to be using for targeting fish in these sort of locations? Well, you could either go spin or you could go bait cast. There's not really too much of a difference or reason as to why you'd go either, but a light to medium spin rod or light to medium bait cast. I've got a uh, Shimano Curado DC 200HG. Now, obviously that's a little bit high end but you can go anything around that 150 200 size or accordingly a 3000 or say 4000 size spin reel in these sort of locations price range it could be anything because let's be honest you're not really going to run into too many snags you're not going to really have too much of an issue with getting busted off you're fishing drains you're not fishing rock bars you're not fishing tight structure you're fishing an open location where the fish can run to its heart's content so heck you could even use a 1000 size spin reel wouldn't recommend it but you could do it now lines and leaders you want to be rounding a 20 pound main line or a 30 pound main line and look anywhere from 30 to 60 pound leader for your threadies uh, for barramundi go a little bit heavier I use a 55 pound schneider just straight mono now that's just because it's got pretty good abrasion resistance you could use fluorocarbon it's not going to make too much of a difference. You're fishing at night. You could fish heavy and you'd still probably be doing sweet because the fish can't see the line that well. Now, a lot of you people are probably thinking, well, lures don't really work at night. Yeah, okay, whatever. You're watching the wrong video if that's the case. Let's talk bait and these sort of locations. You've got mullet, prawns, bony brim, herring, uh, a whole host of other different small crustaceans and small fish. So I'll often use a jerk bait like this Lucky Craft 78 XD. Any prawn imitation is going to work. So you could use Holt Production Swim Prawn, which is something I pretty often, pretty well often use. Hard bodies, shallow divers are better, obviously, than deep divers. So that's just going to depend on uh, how deep your drain is. So, like if it's shallow but it comes out deep pretty quick, the fish are going to be sitting in the deep. You want to be able to use that to puff the mud, so to speak. Now you could use it in both a rattle form or just a silent type, that doesn't matter too much. But if we've covered that and you're happy with that, let's move on to the next part. All right guys, at the end of the day, don't get disheartened if it doesn't work the first time. You're not always gonna get some new flash fishing trick or whatever it is that you learn straight away. So persist, keep going, keep trying at it. 
I'm just hopeful that some of this information has rubbed off on you guys and I've been able to share a little bit of insight into what I do and how I catch these fish. And hopefully it'll help improve your fishing at home and help you catch a threadfin salmon, a barramundi, even an SEQ barramundi if that's what you're after. And you enjoy yourself because at the end of the day that's all we're doing that's all we're doing we're out here to have fun and go out and catch a fish so if it's helped you guys leave a thumbs up drop a comment below if you want to see a little bit more of these information style videos on how to catch a fish in any different circumstance or a different method or something like that something that i can help share with you guys because i know i don't do enough of this often and it's more about the entertainment factor but I know you guys need to get something out of these videos and I'm hoping that in giving you some of this information, it's gonna help you guys. So that being said, it's the end of the video. Remember guys, 80-20, that's fishing. I'll see you in the next one. All right guys, at the end of the day, don't get disheartened. Dis <laughs> the end of the day.